Montana is an agricultural state. Our first Montanans and later settlers to the state were by necessity self-sufficient in food production. As Montana's early agriculture developed, so did transportation, and overseas markets soon opened up to ag producers. Our farmers and ranchers began to produce foods for export, primarily wheat and beef. Throughout the early 1900s, up until the early 1950s, much of the state's food supply continued to be produced locally. Approximately 70% of what Montanans ate back then was produced within the state and in great variety. Food production in our state has changed dramatically over the past 50 years. With the progression towards more efficient machinery and improved production methods, Montana farmers have never produced food in such abundance. Yet today's family farmers have a tough time making a living here, and very little of the food eaten by Montanans is actually grown or processed in our state. In fact, by 1985, Montana farmers were producing enough of only a few food items to meet our state's needs. Current production in Montana is insufficient to meet the needs of the population, despite the fact that Montana could grow enough variety to produce a year-round complete diet. From the 1930s through the early 50s, Montana was actually a net exporter of processed fruits and vegetables, cheese, butter, and a variety of other processed foods, in addition to our raw commodities. Even the food items that we do such a great job of raising in Montana today, such as wheat, beef, pork, and lamb, are now largely processed outside of the state's borders. These products, which are ultimately available to consumers, must be imported, or in many cases, re-imported from other states or nations. By this year, 2007, it's estimated that only 10% of Montanans' food needs will be produced in-state. In the 1950s, food processing employed nearly 3,000 people in our state, but by 1985, there was so little employment in food processing that U.S. Census data on this employment sector is no longer kept for Montana. Well, in the 30s uh, through the 50s, Montana had a lot of localized production where you went to town and uh, you went to the butcher and you got your meat and, the, uh, and all the grain elevators had their own grain mills so they produced their own flour. Um, pretty much everything, since there wasn't a lot of transportation, a lot of infrastructure, everything was pretty much localized. Well, Nowadays we don't have a whole lot of uh, processing happening in the state and um, I think that a lot of smaller communities could benefit from having more of their own localized production and uh, not you know, spend that income on food that the money goes to companies that, that are outside where we live. Farmers and ranchers' share of the consumer food dollar has nearly disappeared. In 1910, they received an average of 60 cents of the consumer's food dollar. Current estimates place that figure at around 7 cents for every food dollar. In 1944, Montana's net farm income per farm was ranked third in the nation. By 2002, well over half of Montana's farmers reported that they were only receiving 25% of their total income from farming. Costs have always been one of our, our biggest fights. We always try to control our costs. You look at fertilizer prices that we're facing right now, we, in the last two years our fertilizer prices have gone up over 130%. Our fuel prices are up about double of what they were, and our machinery costs have gone up by twofold also. How we, how we deal with our costs are we, we try to increase our production and spread our risks by more land. You know, we, we've been getting, we have to get bigger and bigger and be, gain efficiencies to scale. A lot of times we take on risks that um, maybe a normal business wouldn't take on just because we want to stay in the game and produce the food. The role agriculture plays in the food system and the type of food system we have directly affects Montana's economy, nutrition, and food access. Early Montanans grew much of their own food and also had access to food grown by farmers in their communities. These people had better access to good food. 
As farmers began growing commodities for export, we not only lost our food processing sector, we also lost the community's access to locally produced food. This is a growing concern for Montanans who are at risk for hunger. The contemporary term for this problem is food security, but perhaps the more accurate term is food insecurity. This is best described as a situation where families are unable to afford healthy food on a consistent basis without having to seek emergency food assistance from food pantries. Many families living below the poverty level have to make tough decisions and may forego the purchase of food in favor of meeting their other vital expenses. The number of Montanans at risk to experience food insecurity is estimated to be around 290,000 persons, or about 31% of the population. It seems odd that Montana, a largely agricultural state, has a substantial population that experiences food insecurity and hunger. But we must understand the connection between agriculture and hunger. Agriculture production and processing means an increase in a community's access to food, while the increased amount of jobs provides the means for Montana's families to buy food. I have a really unique perspective. I am a low-income person in a, in a low-income family, um, and I work at the Helena Food Share. So I, I see both perspectives of what it's like to, to need food, to need money, to be struggling in Montana. Um, and I can tell you that there are people there who are working poor. They are not lazy people. They are in there, in between jobs, coming in with their children um, who need that access to food because they can't sustain on the money that they're making in jobs. Can Montana profitably expand community-based food systems and provide affordable, healthy food to Montanans experiencing food insecurity and hunger? How can we get back to the situation in which food for Montanans is grown in Montana, processed in Montana, and distributed so that all Montanans are adequately fed? Montana has a very low unemployment rate, below 4% for more than a year. Yet for a number of years, we've consistently been one of the highest ranked states in the nation in the proportion of our population that has to work second and third jobs. A significant portion of our population suffers not from unemployment, but from underemployment. The present structure of Montana's low-wage, service-based economy compels us to focus on the development of local food systems that can provide good jobs to Montanans, helping them to pay for the food they need, rather than turning to emergency food assistance from food pantries and government programs. As Montana's agriculture industry began to shift away from a food-producing infrastructure to an export commodities infrastructure, our economy began to change. Montana began to see an increase in the need for and development of food pantries. These food pantries were established for emergency food assistance. What was supposed to be an intermittent emergency food assistance has become a routine source of food for many families. There is urgency to our hunger problem in Montana. Alongside private efforts to provide emergency food assistance, we have nine government food support programs. Unfortunately, the combination of our government food support programs and our emergency food assistance programs still do not meet the volume of food needs of our low-income families in Montana. The possibility that community-based food production could boost our agricultural industry while creating higher wage jobs would provide an important added benefit to Montana's working yet disadvantaged families. Food producers, emergency food suppliers, government food program directors, and Montana working families can listen to and learn from each other. This will increase the chances that a community-based, sustainable food system can be not only a profitable enterprise, but also provide healthy, affordable food and good-paying jobs to Montana's working families. Without the rapid restructuring of Montana's economy into a higher-waged economy, how can we meet the needs of our good citizens who are working but still cannot afford basic needs? Can we grow, process, and distribute food at the community level in Montana that is both profitable to Montana's farmers and ranchers and affordable to low-income families? People think it's a big city issue. People think that um, we don't have hungry people in Montana. I see 
dozens of them every day, every day coming into the food bank to get food. Why aren't we feeding our own people? Why aren't we feeding Montana products to Montana people? It just makes sense. It, it just makes sense for us to do that.